Generic greetings, can buildings fly? Now we sort of answered that question in the previous airships video where we picked them up via the tethering system and the harpoon gun and moved them around but they weren't flying under their own power however is there a way to make a static defence move around? Well you can ram it and that moves it that way and you can also get well many a mod actually that allows you to build um, static defences with suspendium bases however in the stock game no mods is there a way to do it? Well I think there might be but I don't think it's a way that you should should um, exploit because I don't think this is supposed to be in it but we'll try it out so let's just go over to building editor and what I want to do is go to open design and we'll open up say the dark cube version 2 and we'll place that down now you can see it's got a lot of gunnage and it's it's a fairly decent uh, albeit cheap um, defensive structure however we go to armor we can see that it is currently armed with, I believe, it'll be stone wall, probably. Yes, stone wall. We've got brick wall, heavy steel armor, all this sort of stuff. But we also have dragon hide, which is really, really good. And, more importantly, we have shell armor. And shell armor absorbs four blast damage and four piercing damage. However, if we fill it, you can see it goes this uh, shell color thing. This, the, <laughs> Yeah, it's a suspendium colored. And if we look, it does give 25 lift. Now, we don't know the weight of this thing because it doesn't tell us here. However, is this enough to get it in the air? Well, there's only one way to find out. In terms of uh, in terms of the tree here, you can see it does not state in here anywhere um, lift or propulsion because it's a static defense. It's not supposed to move. So we're going to save the design and we'll say dark cube uh, shell, we'll call it. We might as well. And we'll save that there and then we will leave combat and a nice flat plane for us to work on excellent so we'll say add building and we'll say put the shell in there and then we'll place another building in so add building i'm just going to place a black citadel which is the cheap one cheapest chips and then we'll say fight and we can see <laughs> it is hovering a little bit above the ground now it's not moving it's not going to be able to move however are we able to move this is this a possibility well there's only really one way that I know of to move this. Well, there's a couple of ways, actually, I guess. You could push it with another vehicle, um, which is probably what I'll do. You can... Um you can um, you can't grapple it because you can't grapple friendly targets. Uh, you could use a grapple on this and harpoon onto the target and pull yourself forward. That's a way of doing it. Obviously, the opponent can do that as well. But that does look as if it's hovering. So let's leave that there. And we're going to do a couple of those things that I just mentioned. We're going to try and pushing it and pulling it and all that sort of thing. So we'll go back to combat. And we'll say add building. And we'll place the dark cube shell in there. And we'll place the enemy building. Add building. And we'll say, once again, we'll just say the black citadel. And we'll place it up there. So it's quite away away and then what we want to do is add an airship and we want to get the cheapest airship that we own uh, the Denver is quite cheap but it's not really cheap the prim though the primitive is very cheap and we're going to place the prim behind it so if we start the fight we can see that we are firing away there obviously we are well overpointed but it's not about that and if we say ram and ram to there the prim is going to move forward and <laughs> It's pushing the building along. The question is, will it float off the end of this? Oh, it does. <laughs> it works. It actually pushes it along. It's not gaining or losing altitude, but it's pushing the building. <laughs> okay, right. Um, that changes things then. That does change things. Um, let's leave that fight there, and we're going to try combat once more. And uh, what land ships do we have? Oh, we only really have a couple of land ships, so we can't really use this as like a like a, a tractor to push things or pull things. We can't do that. We'd have to build one uh, separately. Oh, sorry. Instead, then, what I'm going to do is um, have a sip of beverage. Uh, today's beverage is um, lemon and green tea to try and soothe my very painful throat. Um... Let's go over to the building editor once more, open design, we're going to open the shell um, and we'll see what we can do to improve this. Well, what if we, instead of cannon, we remove cannon, we add, how about, oh hang on, here's a thing, move that up one, move the guard barracks up there, we'll remove that. And we'll place a harpoon gun. Oh, I'll have to flip the harpoon gun. Put a harpoon gun there. Actually, there would be fine. We... Oh, this is silly. Uh, we put... <laughs> a saw blades On there. And then... 
perhaps coal on the bomb because it does require coal. Right. Um, <laughs> is this absolutely silly and insane? Oh, wait. Yes, it is. Um, and we will save it. I really don't think this is a good thing to do. Um, combat, day. Oh, perfect flat plane once more. We're going to add building. We'll say the Black Citadel once again can go in there. And our building, the Dark Cube Shell, which obviously is overpointed, will go there. And actually, what, we'll move it back to there. And we'll start the fight. So you can see that we've got a harpoon gun there. We've got nothing else in range. But if we say harpoon... Tether go... <laughs> of all the places the tether could have hit... <laughs> the, the guy in the crow's nest just goes... Junk. Oh. <laughs> As he casually glances down to his left and goes... Ah, that is suboptimal. So the, bu <laughs> the building's going forward... And we then get in melee rage. <laughs> like I say, it is possible to make with mods um, buildings that move because you can have them on um, suspendium rocks and things like that. Um, <laughs> oh, I would have thought that would work. Um, let's go back over to combat then. Um, we'll say add building. We're going to put the shell thing back in. And we're going to try and point it up with something around about the same price. So, um, I mean, airship. What about an airship? Could we tether onto an airship? That's a question. And what, and go, go up ourselves? Um, <laughs> there's only one way of finding out. Um, there's a barry, which is about the right cost. So place the barry in there. Um, 807 versus 886, so they have the point advantage. However, if we start the fight immediately and then go to launch tether, we'll launch a tether at the Barry, which missed, sadly, but the Barry is really intent on getting chopped up. Um, in fact, I've just realised that this thing looks like a Dalek. Uh, <laughs> we are sawing away there. It is now backing up, but we will launch a tether. No, we won't because, damn it, they've taken out the tether. Um, they're going to go for ramming. They have no other option. We've managed to take... <laughs> we managed to take it out. Um, exterminate, indeed. Uh, right, okay. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. Because that was very close to working. Building. Shell. Oops. Get rid of that one. Start the fight and then tether. Harpoon's out. And we are getting pulled towards it. <laughs> right, okay. So there we go. Um, once again, though, it's taken out that harpoon launcher. Okay, right. In order to do this test properly, building. Open the design again. There we are. Um, we're going to move that up to there. I'm going to pull that up to there. And actually, probably there and there. Just top and bottom, that's all. Um, like that. Save the design once again. Oh, sorry. There, that's leave. That's not what I wanted. So save that. So we've got two harpoon launches now. Do we have the crew? Recommended crew 20. We've only got 12. We need more. 12. 12. Oh, hang on. Uh, where's crew then? There we go. That's much better. Um, we've got 24 crew now. Okay. Save. And we'll try that again. So, building. Oh. Oh, oh we need more supply. Okay. Um, I did that last time. Didn't notice it. The reason is because, Mariam, um, about here, where it says building needs more supply hatches, whatever, I've got the uh, record overlay, so I can't see that. I'm just guesstimating where I'm clicking. Um, okay, so we need more supply hatches, so it would be very simple just to put them in there, like so. Um, there we go. Save. Yes, okay. Uh, combat. Dawn. So, there. Once again, we'll put the barrier in. 
both there. Start and immediately grapple. Harpoon's out. Good, good harpooning. So, it is really wanting to back up, but it doesn't have much choice. It's coming this way. Um, it seems that this thing is not affected by altitude. Um, it doesn't seem to... No, it doesn't... No. Oh, hang on! <laughs> it is! <laughs> we had a little hop with it there. Uh... <laughs> right. I'm trying to think of useful applications for this. Um... I'm not thinking of any. <laughs> I'm really not thinking of any. Um, and uh, uh, outside from these edge cases and these, like I say, I, I don't even think you're supposed to be able to put this on. Um, I'm not too sure whether it's a bug or not, but I, it's just, it's completely useless, isn't it? Uh, leave that fight. We'll go back into the combat again. Um, add building. We'll jump that back on. Let's try something else. Let's try... Um, the problem with that airship... <clears throat> excuse me is that it's trying to get close. That's it's a, that's what it has to do. It has to get close. Um, because... No, oh, we're not Harrier. No. Uh, not a Leroy. It has to get close because it's the Barry class, but we want it to go... We want it to try and run away. Um, Denver, no, because that's boarding. Uh, the Crane, we've tried that out. Um... I don't know. The Leroy is just those aerial charges, and that will want to try and get under us. Oh, that's an interesting one, then. What will it do? What will that thing try to do? Start the fight. It's probably just going to ram, you know. It has rammed, and it's managing to go past us, and... <laughs> it's <laughs> it's going all over the place. Um, it doesn't really know what to do, does it? <laughs> got no other guns on it. Um, okay. Um, once more. Once more. Put that in there. We're up a bit, a bit of a, we got a bit of a uh, drop off there, which is good. Um, we'll put something close, as close as we can to it. Uh, we've got the Rock Tosser, which was... This was the, this was the primitive um, series that we did. It actually wasn't a full campaign or anything, but we did uh, three or four episodes where we made the Prim. Uh, we made the Rock Tosser, and we made the Basic. And all these were, like, really cool. Like, they were cheap vessels, but they weren't half good. They were very useful indeed. Um, we're going to move this a bit further forward, just so we're right up close. Start the fight immediately, and launch tethers. Um, it's missed with the tethers. Oh, we've got one tether on, though. We've got one tether on, and it's um, going back over there. Um, we are <laughs> we are going forward. Uh, we've got two tethers on now, so obviously we're at the mercy of wherever it goes, and we are going up. Right, we're, <laughs> we're coming in. <laughs> we're coming for you, mate. Oh no, it's falling down, and we don't have any options for move or flip, do we? Um, we'll say launch tether at there. It's gonna go past us. <laughs> right, you know what? I reckon. We could make something with that. We could definitely make something with that. We'd have to have, um... We'd have to have the, um... You know what actually, you know what might be a useful, uh, use something useful? Um, we make... I'll tell you what, I'll just make it. I'll just make what I think might be of some use. Um, so we'll go over to... Building Editor. Um, what we want to do is go to Weapons and... Flak cannons and one two three i think three sufficient uh, this is going to be a fairly cheap build i hope in terms of weapons then on either side on either side we want to have um harpoon guns um how far in do we want them though probably two either side and we've got four in there um We'll probably put them like that, because then it means we can fit all of the ammo in here. Okay. Resources, ammo store. Um, just the one. Just the one. Command and crew. Barracks. Yes. Bridge. Yes. Um, that's it. Then we just need the shell armor on it. Fill it with that. Um, it is a little bit under crew, but it's not too bad. Um... In terms of supply hatches, then. That's it. 
I'll put one on the other side just for the sake of actually I won't put one on the other side for the sake of symmetry. Um, that's a reinforced supply hatch. Let's go with just a wooden one. There we go. That's it. That can technic that is technically a legal ship. Um, I'm actually going to delete that and put a fire point there. Uh, I'm just going to check the pathing. The pathing is okay, but that's a legal vessel, uh, legal structure. Unless there's something off of here that I can't see. Save design. Um, it's called the Radiant Fortress. Um, well, well, if it's... We'll, we'll have to have... There's the flying, surely. Save the design. There's the flying fortress. Leave. And let's try that. Building. Flying fortress. What price? 600 Airship. Have we got anything close to that? We really don't. We really don't. Um, Denver's boarding. It'll just it'll, it'll win, right? Uh, bot flies cheap. The Barry. I guess the Barry's the closest thing we can get. Um, so we're going to move to there because we need to be in tether range, and we'll fire tethers out. There's tethers. Tethers are good. So we are not pulling it forward, but it can't get further away. And we're, <laughs> yes, this is exactly what I wanted. It's getting closer and it's tethering it. So if it goes back, it pulls us towards it. If it goes to the other side, we'll just tether it on that side as well. <laughs> wow. Um, who would have thought that that would have worked? I mean, the problem, like all flak vessels, that once you take things out right above you, you are then going to get hit by the ship. Um, although we have the advantage. You have to remember, we are many points under that. Let's leave the fight. Let's put that into, I wouldn't call it a real world scenario, that would be totally untruthful. We'll say add airship. We're going to add the Coventry. That's general, that's like our baseline. We tend to use the Coventries quite a lot. In terms of the building, the Flying Fortress, 61218. Which means 1,839, 1,891. Close as near, damn it. Start the fight. Immediately, all of them activate tether. Some of them will get there, some of them won't. Um, we are now pulling this towards us. <laughs> well, it's not running away. Um, and we are pulling, we, are, we have got tethers on it. It's only that tree that's stopping it coming further forward. That can't get tethers on, it's too far away, sadly. <laughs> it's still tethering it. It's still tethering it. Um, what I might do is, if I cut the tethers, what it's going to... I'm just going to see what it's going to do. Oh, no, okay, the, that, the, then that one put tethers on it. So, cutting the tethers, it's it's apparently sitting there quite happily. The problem is... Yeah, that one lost all of its flax straight away. Um, but if we say tether again, like that... It's going to pull it forward and ah, it's just not enough to, to destroy that tree. Okay, one last try. One last try. So, Dawn. Add. That's a bit of a boring landscape. That's not too bad. So, Airship. Coventry. Again, these are all stupid edge caches that you will never really see in, um, in the game. Although, <laughs> I would love to see it. One. Ah, this is a problem. Two, and then three. You can see, sadly, though, we're, like, quite far down. But that's hopefully enough so we can just get... As long as we get a couple of tethers on, we're okay. So there's the tethers all missed. Oh, no, a couple of hit, a couple of hits. So we're now... We are going right underneath it. And when it flies over the top, which it's trying to do, we're going to get even more tethers on it. And... You know what? I think it works. I genuinely <laughs> think that regardless, uh, uh, against all odds, that this sort of works. Maybe not the whole idea of a flying fortress, but having tethers and having tethers and then flak seems to be a decent one. The problem is that shell armor, as you can see, has got the same resistance properties as uh, a wheel of stilton. It, it, it's just, you know, we're getting absolutely plastered. You can see through it. Um, I mean, good air ventilation, you understand, not good against rockets and fighting. Um, so maybe that's something that we've learned and can take forward in terms of, well, in terms of a better design. Maybe the whole 
slooshing around left and right is an advantage, but um, let's go for building Flying Fortress. One, two, three. Um, actually, no. Airship. Let's not put it against Excalibur. <laughs> if it's if it's um, lagging out... <clears throat> excuse me. If it's lagging out um, well, when clicking on it, no way we won't be able to fight it. Um, we could verse the Necrosis, but it's a high-level bomber, so it would be up here. What would it do, though? What would it do? Let's place it in there. Add building. Flying Fortress. I mean, we get a lot of Flying Fortresses. 4,904, 4,975. Start the fight. It's coming down. Launch Tether. Flak is decimating their planes. Tethers are out. And that's slowly pulling... <laughs> It's slowly pulling the fortress towards it. No, it's slowly pulling it forward towards us. Am I being insane? Or is this... Or is there something in this? <laughs> I don't think there is. I really genuinely think that this is... Just... Luck. But I mean... <laughs> no, it's pulling it forward. Uh, it's pulling it back over towards us. It's moving forward. And it's... Going within the flak field. <laughs> it shouldn't work, but it, it has. It has worked. Again, real real game applications, almost none. But I mean, look at it. <laughs> Something's happened. That can't be right. I can't be. I refuse. <laughs> A few to accept that that's right. Um, okay, that was a high-level airship, right? It was just trying to get out the flak field. What would be the worst-case scenario? That would be a long-range um, bomber. Sorry, no, high-altitude high bomb wouldn't work. We got flak. Sitting right at the back with cannons. That would be the worst possible scenario, and we wouldn't be able to fight that. So let's just let's just take that out of the equation because we know for a fact that it's not going to work. Let's place in something that. Might be a reasonable fight for it. Um, no, 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 no. Oh, hang on. Are there sponsons? The Testington. It is. There are loads of sponsons. Um, the Coventry we've tried. Crane, definitely not. Denver, no. Excalibur, no. Um, Harrier. The Harrier, maybe, because it's got guns all over it. Oh, the Austin is flamethrowers? That would probably. Absolutely annihilate us. I think, honestly, the basic is probably the best one. I'm going to put it back there and just see what happens, right? So, building. And the thing about that is, we only get two flying fortresses. I don't think two flying fortresses will be able to beat that. Because, quite frankly, the primitive designs were just so good anyway. Launch tether. It's coming closer. No, you're not going to get close enough for a tether, right? It did get close enough for a tether, but we didn't manage to hit the tether. Now, that's three tethers that's missed. There's a fourth, right? There we go. So we're going to scoot along, cutting the grass. <laughs> never gets old. It never gets old. And good morning. And uh-oh, uh-oh, oh god. It's, it's, di it, yeah, it's definitely dictating the direction of travel now. Um, and we've lost all of, no, one flat cannon's still there. And now there's no flat cannon. Um, yeah, so that there, long-range bombardment is really, long-range bombardment and boarding is really the only way to defeat these things. <laughs> but then again, we've caused a lot of damage. Caused a lot of damage. Okay. Oh, hang on, I was going to cancel that, but it's um, decided to change its course of action here. Here's a question. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. I was about to cut the tethers and see what happens, but it can't. We can't cut the tethers. Okay, we'll leave that then. Um, one last try. I'm going to put the Austin on, which is a flame ship. I'm going to put it back there. Right, I'll actually move it down there. So we're not, it's not in flak or anything like that, but it will have to get close to shooters with flames. Flying Fortress. Four nine zero four versus five two five zero. So, tethers been ordered to be firing. 
it's just crashed into a tree. <laughs> um, uh, the captain's drunk again, sir. Is seriously that's is that all it's gonna do? I believe that's exactly what it's gonna do. It's going to crash into the tree. It doesn't want to come close. Uh, it doesn't know what to do. <laughs> It'll run out of fuel more than, um, faster than me because I don't have fuel. Okay. Um, we said all the Denver would uh, kick our ass. It, it probably would. Uh, the Dresden, high-level bomber. Go on, then. One of our best vessels, if not the best. We'll move it back over to there so it's got it's out of flak range. Flak arc, should I say. Um, obviously, land ships would uh, absolutely annihilate these things as well. I'm looking for a building. One, two, three. One, eight, three, nine versus one, five, four, zero. So we're actually overpointed. So there we go. We'll activate f uh, tether systems. It's actually just coming right above us. And oh, oh. <clears throat> yeah, we have managed to tether it. It's pulling it down. Um, however, it's now dictating their direction of travel, and... Oh, that's not good. I think we've just taken out the suspendium chambers. Um, you notice that all of our flax has gone. Apart from one on the left, which is happily just chiseling away. No suspendium chamber left on them. Engines are still on, but that's about it. We've got a little bit of a fire going on. We're still firing harpoons. And it's actually crushing it as well as it does so. Right. Well, that's been another testing initiative. Brought to you by Generic Random Industries. And quite frankly, that's got juices flowing now. We could improve on that design. Honestly, all we need to do is put armour on the, um, the flak and the guns. Maybe, maybe somewhere to stop the fires. I think there's merit in it. I think it could work. Again, not too sure whether the shell stuff works, but watching the <laughs> the landship, the the defences, the just swinging around underneath is um, <laughs> interesting, if not entirely you useful. Anyway, hope you have enjoyed that. <laughs> I know it's been a bit of a mess around. Um. A couple of things, as always, uh, if you have any uh, suggestions, ideas for designs and things we can change and improve and just random thoughts on the game and what we can build, then by all means drop in the comments. There's also been, obviously, a lot of people asking for series. Um, I'm sort of seriesed out with things at the moment, hence why we're doing a lot of, like, random things. Um, but um, I do plan on touching that again. We'll do Conquest mode. Uh, Conquest um, mode. I did like it. I have played, obviously, a lot of it and have enjoyed it. Um, I believe version 1.1, whenever that is dropped... Um, is going to be adding uh, multiplayer conquest, um, which I'm interested in trying personally, but not doing videos of. But also diplomacy, uh, which was missing from the last conquest mode. So you can't just you just have to kill everybody. You can't ally up, even though the AI can. So hopefully uh, that's when uh, we'll jump back on that, just to sort of answer that. Anyway, hope you have enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.